Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there is Jai Lewandowski. Hey. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at 2002 West Hyatt Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com or look them up on eBay at Hockey Locker. Before we get into today's kind of bigger show, um, I would like to thank all the people who helped me out this week Um, in the comments with my... Um, flubber of a s snow statistic. <laughs> I blame Google. Just a heads up, okay. they're the ones that, uh, or actually, it was my my echo over there that told me that. Anyway, so we'll get into today's games. All right, today the Nashville Predators took on the Edmonton Oilers. Shots on goal per period. In the first period, Edmonton outshoots Nashville 11 to 10. In the second period, Nashville outshoots Edmonton 15 to 14. In the third period, Edmonton outshoots Nashville 10 to 9. And in total, Edmonton outshoots Nashville 35 to 34. Now, on the faceoff percentage, Nashville was better at 66.1%. To Edmonton's 33.9%. Nashville went one for four on the power play with eight penalty minutes, while Edmonton goes two for three on the power play with 10 penalty minutes. Edmonton out hits Nashville 29 to 24, and Nashville out blocks Edmonton 16 to 6. We're going to be using a lot of ice packs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, scoring in the first period for Edmonton was Nurse scoring his second of the season, assisted by Eckholm, his second, and McLeod, his first. That was on the power play. Then at the 10-22 mark, Nashville scores from Forsberg, his second of the year, assisted by O'Reilly and Del Gaizo. That is Del Gaizo's first NHL point and assist. Um, also wanted to add into that, uh, that is also his first game. So he's a yeah. point per game guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the second period, it was the o o o o Riley show. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. We've got uh, Ryan O'Reilly with his fifth goal with an assist from Forsberg, his ninth, and Carrier, his third. That was a slap shot from O'Reilly. Then um, O'Reilly scores his sixth with an assist from Forsberg, his tenth, and Novak, his third. That was at the 324 mark. Well, that was also a slap shot on the power play. Uh, Zach Hyman gets a goal on the power play for the Oilers um, with an assist from Bouchard, his seventh, and McDavid, his eighth, uh, Hyman, his fourth. Then Novak gets on the board. That makes it 4-2 for Nashville with his sixth with an assist from Jay Evangelista. His sixth and Yossi his sixth. This is not the six six. What in the six six six? It's not October. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm kidding. Um, and then O'Reilly scores again in the third at the 822 mark with a snapshot with an assist from Nyquist and Carrier. Nyquist fourth, Carrier is fourth. In that for Edmonton was Jack Campbell. He stopped 29 of 34 with a 0.853, same percentage. In that for the Nashville Predators, Lankinen stopping 33 of 35 with a 0.943. Much better performance from Lankinen than his last start. Yeah. But it's good to see him get going. Yeah. Nyquist plus three. O'Reilly plus three. Forsberg plus three. Lazan plus two. Carrier plus two. Everyone on defense was a plus. All but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys out of seven guys out of what is it? 18 skaters? Yeah. Good night for the friends. 
Your referees were Kelly Sutherland and Brian Pochmara. Your lines persons were Sandor Alfonso and Travis Gorlitz. Head coach for Edmonton is Jay Woodcroft. Head coach for Nashville is Andrew Burnett. Scratches for the Oilers were Connor Brown and Matthias Yadmark. Uh, scratches for Nashville were Ryan McDonough, Michael McCarron, and Samuel Fajimo. All right. Then also today, the Milwaukee Admirals took on the Grand Rapids Griffins. It was our salute to the military night. In the first period, Grand Rapids outshot Milwaukee 8-5. to five. In the second period, Grand Rapids outshot Milwaukee 22-7. to seven. In the third period, Grand Rapids outshot Milwaukee 7-4. to four. In total, Grand Rapids outshoots Milwaukee 37-16. to 16. Grand Rapids goes 0 for 1 on the power play with 11 minutes, 4 infractions, while Milwaukee goes 0 for 2 with 9 minutes, 3 infractions. Scoring in the first is Ty Falimer, his... First of the season with an assist from Cal O'Reilly and Roland McEwen. Cal O'Reilly's first point as an uh and in his return to the Admirals. Scoring in the second at the 1335 mark for the Griffins was Elmer Soderbloom, his first of the year, assisted by Carter Mazur, his first, and Amadeus Lombardi, his third. Then at Amadeus. Yeah. <laughs> Then at the 1847 mark for the Griffins, Brogan Rafferty scores his first with an assist from William Wallander, his first. Rafferty from the local area. Okay. That's the same one that played for Coachella last year. Yeah. Um. In that for the Grand Rapids Griffins was Michael Hutchinson. Um, in net for the Admirals was Jaroslav Askarov, stopping 35 of 37. Hutchinson stopped 15 of 16. Um, before we get into why this was this way, let's just add that this was the worst officiating I've seen since that game where... Um, um, Comrie kept knocking the net off. Yeah. And they didn't call nothing on it. Um, need to get more pucks to the net. Need to get bodies to the net. We need to get a little more confidence carrying the puck through. Can't keep dumping it in on the power play. It's just, you got to keep possession. And anytime you dump it in, you risk possession. Yeah. So it's just one of those situations. Um, Yarrow played amazing. Yeah, he did. Yarrow did everything he could to give this team a chance to win. And and, and I'm not saying that if I, I will say this, if Grosnick was in, it would probably have been a little worse. It wouldn't have mattered who you had in net today. They weren't winning this game. Right. The Griffins had everything go their way. Um, You know, and, and they were playing some cheap hockey. I, I am not. Yeah. Um, Jankowski being hurt, uh, not a fan of that either. Just, just you know, um, Admirals, we got to have a short memory and move on. Um, after tonight, it looks like we're going to be at the bottom of the division. If I stand a hundred percent correct, no. Fortunately, we get to sit at sixth in the division. Um, not a great start, not a horrible start, but got to do something because. Goals for versus goals against are eight or fourteen apiece. They're even. Two game losing streak. You gotta wake up, boys. Yep. Um, the Admirals are back after it on Tuesday at ten thirty in the morning.
Uh, the Preds are back on. Tuesday uh, against uh, Calgary. That game will be graphic on the part that we have an Admirals game the next morning at 10.30, and I will be attending that. So 9 o'clock puck drop for us is hard. Yeah. Um. So... Uh, beyond that, oh, let's get into this week's league news. All righty. Um, first off, I would like to congrats, congratulate Paul Statsny from retiring from the NHL 17 seasons, uh, 37 years old, um, He said, I haven't filed anything, but in early September, we decided we were done. I didn't put anything out on social media or anything. I kind of came into to the league quietly, and I'm going to leave the league quietly. That's the way I like it. All the people close to me know, and then word eventually gets out. He was a second-round pick, number 44 overall, in the 2005 draft by the Colorado Avalanche. He played eight or had 800 at 22 points, he had 293 goals, 529 assists. He played in 1,145 games um, with the Avalanche Blues, Jets, Vegas, and Carolina. Um, he had 73 points, 30 goals, 43 assists in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um Uh, he is the son of Hall of Fame, a Hockey Hall of Famer Peter Stasny. So, what's your thoughts on on him being done? I know it's weird. All the guys that were coming in when we were, you know, yeah, a little younger. No, oh, definitely have a lot of memories of him. Yeah. Especially as you as an Avalanche fan. Yeah. That's like me with Ryan O'Reilly. He just keeps seems to follow me everywhere I like to be. <laughs> Except for Toronto. Didn't like that. As a uh, originally uh, hockey fan of the uh, Sabres, just not a fan of Toronto at all. Never will be. Never liked him. Them in Boston. Um, as far as that goes, um, speaking of Boston, Charlie McAvoy's uh hit. Um, he left his feet and hit um Ekman Larson in the head. Uh, four games. Uh, amounts to a hundred and ninety-seven thousand nine hundred and sixteen dollars and sixty-eight cents. The money will go to the Players' Emergency Assistance Fund. What is your uh, thoughts on on guys a little more this year hitting towards the head? Um, it's not good. I have also noticed this year they're leaving their feet a lot more, too. Yeah, I mean... There's a difference from like Butters hit earlier to we saw in the game today where he just leveled the guy. Right. Left his feet, just drove right through him. Yeah. Goes all day. <clears throat> so, you know, um, just kind of those little things. Um, other thing, it's not just an NHL problem, but officiating this year seems to just be. <laughs> Like the officiating in, uh, in across hockey seems to be pretty bad this year. Um, 
I I would like to start by asking John, what are your thoughts on that? And can we elaborate on a little bit of what we think the elites could do to make it a little better? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. From what I've seen, the officiating has been quite off from the norm. But, I mean, other than that, I don't know. I've seen more AHL games this year than NHL. I agree there because normally we're running double headers, anyways. Right. So, and all of them have been on NHL Network, so I've had to listen. Yeah. But even like listening to Aaron, and I'm sure listening to Aaron today, even, or the radio guy, depending on which way you watched. Oh, uh, both. AHL TV and my 24. Yeah. I switched. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I I just think that you can probably tell from both sides of that mic that, you know, complaints about yeah, it. I mean, I saw a couple high sticking calls tonight that definitely should have been called and they were not. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like we said, Jankowski, I think he was the one that took a high stick, and, and it looked like they were stitching him up on the bench. Yeah. And then they called him for roughing. Well, he never got the high stick, never nothing, you know. I, I'd have been mad. To, I'd have been mad, too, if I was Carl. You know, and as the game went on, they were just letting him go. Uh, LaRue got held, like, seven times, no call. Um, you know, um, people may not like it, but like the, the officiating over the last few years has just been, it's getting worse. It, please don't make it like every other league where we just hate watching because the officiating so bad. Uh, just wanted to put a quick note out there. Um, Grab Sword, Tanner Bolendijk, and uh, Austin Roast, all from the WHL, are uh, point per game. I know next week we're doing our in the system. Yep. And we're taking time off from the um, NHL news for a little bit. Let it build up some. Uh, but before we get out of here, um, there's been talks of them expanding and, and whatnot in several different locations. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about some of those locations and what hockey would potentially be there and, and, and what it was, there, is there a possibility for it to succeed? No, I mean, there's always a possibility for it to succeed. Look, Arizona's still here. Um, but I'm just saying, from that point and perspective, Arizona is still here. They've filed for bankruptcy twice. They've changed owners four times. It's not been pretty for that organization, yet they're still here. Um, but, um, we'll start with the most odd one, which is Utah. Utah has been talking about getting an NHL team in that building with the Jazz and potentially moving their ECHL to AHL to be with them. What is your thoughts on that? 
Well, Utah is a little bit of an oddity, but I don't know. I think hockey would thrive there, to be honest. I think it would. More than like a Houston, which is another one on the list. Right. Um, I, I just don't see it working in Houston. Um, San Antonio is another interesting that one that's been kind of floated around. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that those are the interesting ones. Now we all know Quebec wants a team. It'll eventually happen. Yeah. Um, Toronto and Chicago. Stop trying to get second teams. We don't like the ones you got. You don't need a second team. This isn't baseball. Or basketball, for that matter. There's a couple basketball cities where I have multiple teams. Was it LA has three teams in, in, in their area? For ba- baseball, at least. Yeah, I'm trying to run through them in my head. Football. Well, kind of. I mean, Oakland's kind of far away, but it's not. Right. Like, you got Oakland, L.A., and... Well, you got the Dodgers and you got the Angels. And then you got the Giants. Up north. California has four teams. Not to mention the copious amounts of minor league teams. Yeah. So, I mean... Just one of those interesting, weird, wonky kind of. We'll see what happens. All righty. Um, what would like? What would you think if Houston did come back? Would it be almost like they would have to go with the arrows? <laughs> yeah. Probably. For all time's sake, for us old hockey fans, I see their <laughs> logo behind you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, um kind of like the logo behind you, the Utah Grizzlies. <laughs> right. Like, you know, that would be such an easy marketing ploy, it's not even funny. Then they can move the Memphis Grizzlies to Utah. And the Jazz can go to Memphis, where they belong. Uh-huh. See where it all would make sense? The Utah Jazz, where they allow no jazz. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. You were Utah, where they allow the jazz, where they do not allow music. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, I joke, I joke. That comes from a Trey and Matt Parker or Matt Trey Parker and Matt Stone movie, basketball. For those of you uh, non-millennial people, <laughs> um, but uh, the <laughs> brain no, no compute, <laughs> um. I'm going to just say it outright. There's only one way to say it. Um, Admirals, I get your intro. But if he's around as much as he is, can you at least do slide editing? To where it's up against the opponent instead of the star, the admirals can make the stars fall from the sky, and they tamed a savage beast. But I hear they're looking for revenge. Can we just do, you know, think of some cl- clever little, you know, thing to say about uh, the opposing team of that night? I mean, it's just something that I would push because um, I, I think that uh, in time it'll get stale. I'm not saying it's there yet, but I, I get where some people are going to come from on that. It, it will get stale. 
Now, at least we're not the wolves who have been using the same intro for 30 years. Or, you know, as much as I love my way, they've been using the same one since we won our championship. So, you know, just saying. Got to figure it out after a while. Um, Beyond that, I got nothing. What you got, John? Nothing. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, folks. Well, as we said, tired. Um, we're both, like, exhausted, so... Um, we're gonna enjoy tomorrow, that's for sure. <laughs> so, I have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and don't forget to change your clocks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>